Today, we're looking at how to create AI images with just one high quality reference image of the person or AI character that you're trying to create. Previously, you would typically do this with something called a LoRa, which is something I've covered in previous videos. However, to do that, you usually need at least five to 10 images to get any qualitative results. And while you can train a LoRa with just one image, I don't recommend it as results can be very mixed. In the past, we would have used something like Instant ID or IP Adapter with SDXL, and we did have a version of PULID that did work with Flux. However, it had a lot of issues with Comfy UI. Suffering from an issue called model pollution, images would be grainy, lack detail, and just not be generally usable at all. However, that changes today. The creator LL Dancing has come out with an update to PULID 2 for Flux, has come out with an update for PULID for Flux for Comfy version 2.0. That's a mouthful. Using this new node collection, along with the updated PULID model, we're able to get pretty good results with just one image. And in fact, one of the really cool new things about this update is the creator has even released a workflow that allows you to take two source images and essentially have a two character image output, something that has been historically difficult to do with LoRa's and we can do it very easily with this new Pulid node. Now, there are a couple of steps that are required to install this. You need to download a couple of models. However, I set up everything with a one-click solution on my RunPod. You can check out the link down below. You just use a template and you're good to go. And I am trying out something new for my Patreon supply for my Patreon supporters. I will be making available a one-click installer down below where you just run it next to your Comfy UI folder and it should go ahead and download all the models for you. So you don't need to go through all of these steps. You just need to, however, since it's my first time doing this, I do recommend you go through the video, see what all of the steps are and double check that everything is downloaded as the script assumes a couple of things such as your virtual environment is called Vem. I will have a version for Comfy UI Portable as well, and it takes advantage of the naming convention of Comfy UI Portable. And otherwise, I'll have a version for Mac and Linux as well. So if you're installing it manually or you're just following through to make sure that all of the models have been installed, let's jump right in. So the first thing you're going to want to do is obviously install the correct node collection. So to do that, we're going to open up the Comfy UI Manager, head on over here to Custom Nodes Manager, and then we're going to look for Pulid. Now you'll see a few collections over here. If you have any of these previously installed or are using a prior Pulid node collection, please uninstall it and restart as any of them will cause conflicts with this new installer. Once you've uninstalled everything, the one that we want is this one over here, Comfy UI Pulid Flux 2 by this creator, LL Dancing. Now they will have two sets of node collections that I'm gonna ask you to install. I want you to install the Comfy UI Pulid Flux 2 and the Comfy UI Patches 2. Now this one is theoretically optional. However, the workflows that I'm gonna provide and that the creator provides do require this as they take advantage of T-Cache and wave speed, something that I've covered about in my previous video, which makes the entire process run a lot faster. So please make sure that you install that. As you can see here, I have them already installed. The import fail here, if that happens to you, it's pretty easy. Just do a try fix and restart if you've installed it previously and it should work. Now, while installing or trying the fix, you may see something like this up here where you're getting this Cloudflare error. I think this is more of a RunPod issue. However, don't fret. If you come on over to your RunPod logs, you can just see the process of the installation here where it's downloading the Onyx runtime. If at any point you see it stopping as it's done here, that happened to me before, just go ahead and restart the pod. Likewise, if you are doing this on your local machine, just restart Comfy UI and it should solve the problem. So we can see here that it's starting up and it's asking me to go right in. And while that has worked for me in the past, you can see right here that it didn't work this time. The other solution, which is my less preferred one, but it does have a higher success rate is to uninstall, do the restart, and then reinstall it. And once again, it does take a while. When I installed it the first time, this is where it hung up again, downloading the Onyx runtime wheel. Let's leave it for a bit and see if it does it time out. Once again, with your installation, you might encounter this timeout issue. Before, when we did the try fix, I didn't have the close option here. Now I do, so just click close, refresh the browser, and from the manager, restart Comfy UI. In this case, before I restart, I've come back over here to the logs and I can see that the installation was successful with the done marker here. So please do keep these troubleshoots in mind if you are having issues. So now that we know that's done, let's go ahead and do a manual restart so that the node 
initializes properly. And you can see here, Workspace Comfy UI Custom Nodes Comfy Purely Flux 2 has been imported successfully. If we now go ahead and refresh the nodes, refresh the browser, we can see everything has loaded correctly. So let's go through the workflows. It looks pretty messy, but don't worry. It's actually pretty simple. And the version that I released to you guys will have everything with groups and notes. So keep an eye out for that. Let's separate this and organize it a little bit. So up here, we've got our dual clip loader. This loads our clips. Our prompt is over here. This is gonna take the reference image and generate a new image with the face of the person that we are using initially. This is not a face replacement. It creates an entirely new image using the original image as a reference. We've got a flux guidance node over here. And then that feeds into the usual slew of flux nodes. If you wanna learn more about this, I'll have a video linked about using flux down below where I go through each of these nodes in detail so you understand what it does. It's basically a K sampler broken up into many pieces. If you don't know what a K sampler is, I've got another video for that over here. So the new components are over here. The main node is this apply flux ID where we feed in the flux model. In this case, I've got the Pulin model, which is this one over here this load EVA clip node, and finally load inside face. Now this is really important because we will need to manually install models for some of these. And I'll get into that once we've gone through the workflow. All of that feeds into this apply Pulit flux. And then from here, you'll see that there's a bunch of nodes attached. These two up here feed into a basic scheduler and a basic guider, which then feeds into the sampler custom advance. It's in Chinese because that's how it came in. Again, I will try and have an English version available for you guys so that if you use the workflow, everything will be in English. But this is basically a sampler custom advanced. We've got three of them here. And the reason for that is so that we can compare the performance and speed improvements, whether we're doing it using the standard way, which is up here through the base, using T-Cache and using wave speed, which uses the apply first block cache node. Again, all covered in my previous video. So here in model, it goes into this flux forward overrider, which then goes into apply T-Cache patch. This threshold here is where we can set how fast we want the model to run. The higher the number, the faster it goes, but the more issues you will run into into the image generation. So play around with it and see where you're comfortable with. And same thing down here. This does the same thing for wave speed. The only one you want to be touching is this residual difference threshold. If I remember correctly, the more you increase it, the faster it goes, the more issues you'll have with your image. Then those all feed into their own basic guiders and basic schedulers. And then we've got one over here for the original. And then they each feed into their own case samplers. They have their own VAE decoders. And then you can compare the results over here. Let's upload an image from one of my AI generated characters. This one over here, go ahead and open it. There's a pre-filled prompt here from the creator, which is basically just a simple portrait as a way to test out the image. And of course I need to update my V as I have that in a different location. So while this runs, let's look at what are the models that we need to install? Well, it's pretty simple and straightforward. There are three models that we need. The first one is we obviously need the original Pulid model. Links for everything will be down below. So I'm just gonna show you here a diagram of where everything needs to go. So the Pulid model goes into Comfy UI models Pulid. You can go ahead and download that straight into that folder. Then we need a clip model. This one is the AVA 02 clip L14-336. You go ahead and put that in Comfy UI models clip. And finally, we need the Insight Face Antelope V2. Now, the link that I'm gonna provide you down below is a zipped file. So you need to go ahead and download the zip and then unzip it into your Comfy UI models Insight Face models Antelope V2 folder. You will need to create this. It does not come default with Comfy UI, as does the Pulid folder I mentioned earlier. So if you don't have any of these folders, don't be scared, go ahead and create them and put the models in. Now, if you're wondering why this is taking so long, there is one more model that is needed, which is the Face X Lib model. However, this gets downloaded automatically the first time you use it. Once you've completed the model downloads and installed the node collections, you should be good to go and be able to run the attached workflows. However, before we finish up, let's go through the two character workflow that I mentioned earlier. If we have a look at it, there's a lot of things that carry over from the previous workflow that I showed you. And once again, the version that I release will be organized into groups. Up here, we've got the clip loaders. So we've got the dual clip. We've got the prompt over here, which feeds into the flux guidance. And then we've got the case sampler 
broken down over here into the separate nodes with the sampler custom advance up here, basic scheduler here, and they all connect into each other until they go into the bay and spit out the image. For this particular one, the creator is using Tcash. So again, this is the same as what we discussed earlier. These nodes are the flux forward overrider and the apply Tcash paths that speeds up the entire process. And over here, we've got two apply Qlit flux nodes. Obviously one is associated with each of these two character images. So we've got one here for this character and one here for this character. I just organize it here so it's a little bit easier to see. Now, what you'll note that's interesting is the two apply Pulid Flux nodes are actually daisy chained into each other. So we've got Flux here feeding into the first apply Pulid Flux and then feeding in again to another apply Pulid Flux. And then the model goes out into the TCAD group nodes. Then like before, we've got the load Eva clip, the load insight face, and the load Pulid model and the images feed into their respective nodes. And what's different about this is besides the fact that we've got two Pulid flux nodes is a mask is applied to the final image. And the way that it works is this character here on the left is drawn in here on the left and this character is drawn in on the right. And the way we do that is we have this mask composite function. So the way that it works is we were creating two solid masks here where we are defining the width and height. This one encompasses the entire width of the image, 1024 by 768. And this one encompasses half of it. So this one is going to draw the entire image and this one's going to draw half of it on top. We composite them into this mask composite that will make the left side black and the right side white. And what we're doing is once the mask composite and what we're doing is the next step after the mask composite is one side of the mask goes into this character on the left. And the other side of the mask goes into an invert mask and then goes into the character on the right. And the reason for that is we will only be drawing the black side of the mask. Now, if this is split into a left and right mask where only one side is black, that only that side will get drawn. So we need to flip the mask so that both sides get drawn by a separate character. And those masks get fed in here into a tension mask, which will draw that side of the image and ensure that it blends nicely. And that's how we end up with this image here with the two characters. Unfortunately, the results in this particular version of the workflow are not amazing. I did find better results when just doing a single image, even though that's effectively what we're doing here. We're drawing each side separately. The faces look a little pasty, a little painterly. I have a feeling that also has to do with the prompt. So with a little bit of experimentation with the prompt, you could potentially get better results. It could also have to do with the fact that I'm using the FP8 model. I also have, it could also have something to do with the fact that I'm using the FP8 model. I also have the flux wave model, which is a fine tune of flux that I find works very well. So I recommend that you go and try that out. And that's pretty much it. Thanks so much for tuning in. If you found this video helpful, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you really want to support the channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon, where I make exclusive workflows and other goodies available for my Patreon supporters, such as the installer script I mentioned earlier. If you have any questions about anything covered in the video, please do come by the Discord and check us out. I'm always open for questions, although I may take a couple of days to respond, and we have a growing community there who's happy to help you out. It is that you're doing. Finally, if you want to stay up to date with my videos, as well as the latest AI news, please consider subscribing to my newsletter. It goes out once every two weeks with a summary of the latest videos and the latest AI news from the previous two weeks. Thanks so much for coming by and I'll catch you guys in the next one.